Greg Coleman just told us that he, you know, clean uniform, just go out and punt. And you were a baseball player, so you could get dirty, but not like being a tight end and going across the middle of the whole thing, yet you end up gravitating back towards football. What led you back to football instead of just continuing on the path with baseball? Well, Charles, before I answer that, if you don't mind, I'd like to honor some of the people that are here that helped me uh, make that decision. Uh, some of my baseball players that you saw in the photo, they were there. Some of my football players, like Lance Pillars and Augusta Lee, they're here. And one of my best friends at the time, um, Ronnie, he's over there. But most of all, when you go to Alcorn, you go for two things. You go to get an education, and you go to find a wife that's on, <laughs> that's on your level. And I would like to say, Atlanta, Georgia, take a look at my family over there. Let me show you what you're looking at. That's my family there. The folks in the back helped me make that decision. Uh, I gravitated, you heard earlier in the program that I had signed a scholarship with another team. And I met this young lady with two months left in high school. And man, she was the light of my eye. I didn't know her. I didn't know how to get to her. But you know, God make things happen. And one day our mailman, who had been our mailman for many years, he asked me a question. He said, do you know my sister? I said, no, I don't think so. What's her name? He says, Vivian Davis. Never, didn't ring a bell. When I went to school the next day, I asked my friend, I got to find this Vivian Davis. And lo and behold, it was the lady that I had my eye on for the entire year could, <laughs> and could not get a, enough energy to go and speak with her, but that gave me the impetus to do that. So, so what I gathered out of all that, <laughs> neither rain nor snow nor sleet stops the post postman from his appointed rounds and help make that happen. And the second thing is there's a university out there somewhere that kept waiting for, when is Giles showing up? And he was chasing the beautiful Vivian at Alcorn and made it all happen. So when we always talk about, you know, what did the, what did the HBCU do for you? We know what it did for Jimmy Giles. So I want to, let me. 45 years later. 45 years later. That deserves a round of applause. He's going to give us a quick one here about the football, and then I'm gonna ask him one more question. And then I, met, you know, I was gonna come over and sit next to you, Jimmy, but here we go. See, Greg and I can take up all the time. He just didn't give him enough time. <laughs> Alcorn and Grambling State University were the first colleges, period, to play in the Louisiana Superdome. That was the only thing that motivated me to play co college football. I had no desire, I had promised my father and mother that I was going to school to get an education and was going to law school. Of course, they were disappointed when I got drafted in football, but they came around. They came around. But that was the only thing. And during my tenure in playing college football, I had a chance to meet a guy that became one of my lifelong friends, number 12 from Grambling State University. And he's my quarterback. In spite of anybody saying anything, he's my quarterback, Doug Williams. I want to continue in that vein because Doug was unique at that time. Shaq had been through. There hadn't been very many. We were changing positions with Marlon the Magician Briscoe. We weren't letting guys do this. But now you have that quarterback who was your guy from an HBCU, and you two were lethal 
out on the field. You were, you were really wide receiver one, even though you were playing tight end. Can you give us a sense of what it was like? Because I sure, I'm sure a lot of your communication was unspoken in making some of those great plays. See, it takes somebody to have that foresight to understand that. And that was what we had when we were on the football field. We had this telepathic thing going between us. I knew when he needed help. You know, the coaches would call all these plays, and they weren't working. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth, and I can't help it. But Doug Williams was an all-star. And when he knew it was time to win a football game, he let all the rules go out the door. He would call a play, and he would look at me, look my way, and say, homeboy. I knew what that meant, get open. <laughs> this is the only man I ever seen throw a 20 yard out, 10 feet off the ground. And people said that, you know, he threw the ball too hard. But I was the first Keyshawn Johnson, because all I wanted him to do was throw me the damn ball. <laughs> but I was a blocking tight end, and I believe in helping my running backs. And if you get a good running back like I had on a number of occasions, They'll help set up good blocks. And they made me good block, a, a good blocker throughout my tenure with the National Football League. Well, not just a good blocker, a tremendous receiver, all-around guy, and one of the smartest people in the room because he went to Alcorn State for the right reasons. <laughs> Figured out, ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Famer Jimmy Giles. Thank you, Thank you brother. Feel better, okay?